Hi everyone, Chris from Pain and Glory here, and we're back looking at more 10 millimeter fantasy figures. This time, they are sculpted by Forest Dragon, very popular for 3D printing. You can also buy them a couple different distributors in the UK, Europe, and the United States pre-printed. These are the Legions of the Undead, and we're going to be going with basic skeleton warriors. Now, I'm going to be painting up this one on camera, just a basic strip, six skeleton warriors. Not really a lot of armor or anything. A little bit of cloth, a couple of helmets, obviously their spears and their shields are their primary, and most of them is gonna be bone, which means we're gonna be able to paint them up pretty quickly and also go in and give them just some basic highlights, which will really make them stand out, while also making a wash choice that will make them look grim and dark and like they come from a, the depths of necromancy. At the same time, I'm gonna be painting up these two strips off camera so that at the end I can base them up and show you what they would look like all finished up. Now I am basing them on 40 by 40 millimeter squares. This is one I 3D printed with a little divot so I could put a magnet in it um, and I'm going to be using them for fantastic battles but if you were doing War Master rather than doing three of them on a 40 by 40 you would do two of them on a 20 by 20 and then you would stack a couple of these together to get one unit. So I'm going to pick out which bone color I want to use and we'll get started on this. So the first step in painting our skeletons is actually not to paint the bone. It's actually to paint the most difficult to reach thing and the recesses, which is the back of the shields. Because once I paint the bone, if I go to paint the back of the shields, whenever I try to get into those crevices, I'm gonna get whatever color I'm doing there on the bone. Now I've gone purposefully with a very dark brown on this, oak, oak brown from Army Painter, but there's a couple of very similar dark browns uh, chocolate brown from Vallejo is pretty similar. And so I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna use this. Normally I say 10 millimeter, hey, go with bright colors, 10 millimeter, you need to brighten it up. But with these shields, gotta even reach in there between the legs to get everything. With these shields, because we're doing the back of the shields, this is gonna be a natural shadow area. So we can really just make them a dark color. And I can also kind of use this, if a shield is covering up the chest, then the chest can be brown. And if I can't get in there safely and paint the chest uh, bone colored later on, because the shield is coloring it, I have this dark brown shadow in there now. And except under incredibly close inspection, which a 10 millimeter skeleton uh, strip, one of, you know, a couple, if not dozens, is uh, not gonna get that sort of close inspection when it's on the table. So we'll finish up with this brown, and then after that, we can come in and start hitting the bone colors. Now, after we're done painting in the dark brown behind the shields, of course, one of the most important colors you're gonna paint on a skeleton is the bone color. Now, I could just go with the very aptly named skeleton bone color, which is an excellent bone tan color. However, in 10 millimeter, the general rule is to go a little bit lighter. Now, this is my next shade lighter, mummy robe, but that is really, really light. This is like completely bleached bone, and I want these skeletons to be more dirty. So what I did is I mixed up a roughly two to one, 50, yeah, roughly two to one of skeleton bone and mummy robes. And then we just kind of go in, and I'd say you could just completely slather this on, except you do have to try to avoid the brown that we just painted in there. So that is the one thing that you need to try to avoid. I start in the back, just so I can see where that brown is. And I'm gonna go across the entire back of all of these skeletons. I don't really care if I get the bone color on the bits of clothing that they've still got on or their spear hafts or the front half of the shields because we're gonna come back later and clean all that up. So this is a pretty straightforward step. Again, all you need to avoid is getting the bone color on those shields. And that's pretty much it. So we'll be back when the skeleton is done, the bone color, and um, pick out all of the details. So now that we are done with all of the bone, we're gonna go in and do what are the primary um, kind of accessories on these figures, which are their bits of cloth, which you can see better from the back here. You can see some of them have bits of cloth hanging from their shoulders, around their waist, kind of as a little waving in the breeze, and it's about every other figure on this particular strip. Now, because we've gone so light with the bone, we can afford to go dark here. I'm also going for a kind of a traditional vampire counts um, black and red color scheme. 
You could, of course, choose this cloth to be whatever color you want, but I want it to be really old and dingy looking. So I've gone with Necromancer Cloak from the Army Painter. It is not black, but it is almost black. It's a very, very dark gray. And I've also thinned it out. This is also a place where the Army Painter paints, which don't have perfect coverage. I mean, very few paints do. Um, if you wanted perfect coverage on this, I'd have to go back in and do a second coat, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to allow the white primer or the bone colored base coat that got on it to show through when it dries as a natural highlight. That way I don't have to go back through and paint highlights except on really big obvious bits. Some of these figures you gotta be careful to get in there and I can see I got some black on the hand there. So there's always gonna be a cleanup step especially when you're painting on strips, you're just gonna get paint on things you don't mean to sometimes. So we'll go in and we'll do this, and then we'll talk about how we're going to paint their shields, which is the other big choice in colors that you have. I'm gonna be going with either, uh, depending on the shield, wood or red. As I'm painting three strips at once, I realized I started painting the red without actually filming because I lost track of which strip was my filming strip. So I am painting a pure red onto these skeletons. Now these shields are made of a combination of wood and metal. Uh, you can see the wood grain on this one, whereas this shield that I've already painted red does not have that one. It's a fully metal shield. So it's really your call on what color you want to paint them or with the wooden shields, you could just paint them some kind of brown wood color. But I wanna go for a very traditional kind of like 1990s games workshop look with lots of bright primary red. Um, and then I'm not gonna go for green bases on these guys. I'm not, I'm not quite dedicated to that kind of classic uh, goblin green base with red everything. Um, at least not for this project, maybe for a different project. But I'm going in and all the shields, at least the front of the shields are red because the back we already did in dark brown because that is a good shadow color. Um, and then the uh, rims of the shields are gonna be rimmed in a silver. But before we get to the metal, we're gonna finish up just a couple of other little things that need to be finished up. And that's primarily going to be the spear hefts. So once again, my continued lack of the Vallejo old wood color means I have to mix up my own custom wood. So here I'm using leather brown, a little bit of mummy rope to lighten up, and then to make it a little more than just a light brown, a little bit of wood. Not just because it's called wood, but because I like just a hint of kind of that orangey color in there. This is, with these particular figures, other than the shields, which even if I wasn't painting them red, I would want them to be a different wood color. Uh, it's really just the spear hafts that are wood. And the hardest part of these spear hafts is going to be for the figures in the middle, getting in, and you can see right in there, I'm gonna have to get in and hit that spear haft without hitting that shield. And it's pretty much impossible because they are tiny. So a certain amount of cleanup is going to be required on these figures that's almost inevitable. There are so many nooks and crannies that you're always eventually going to hit something. So I'm going to finish painting up these spear halves and then we'll talk about metal choices. So the last step of the base coasts is going to be the metal. Now with Undead, I'm going to want some old tarnished metal and we'll talk about rust effects at the very end. I would normally go with gunmetal. It's my dark metal from Army Painter, similar to I think Lead Belcher from Games Workshop um, on 28 millimeters. But with 10 millimeter figures, Darker colors appear darker, so you want to go up one shade if you want to maintain some sort of bright contrast at the highest points. So I'm going with plate mail metal, which again, I normally would not use on 28 millimeter undead when I want some sort of like dirty, uh, dirty old tarnished metal. And so I'm going to do this to both, some of these shields have rims, and so I'm going to rim them in metallic. They also have a, some of them have bosses in the metal. That little round part, I, I believe, is called a boss. B-O-S. I don't know what it, why it's called that, but it is. And this is an area where I can already see I got some 
metallic paints on the red. So I'm going to have to go back in and clean that up. Uh, one other thing I'll point out about these Forest Dragon skeletons, and it's easy to miss, is some of them, like this one here, has a little shin guard piece. So that is going to get painted in metallic. And then, of course, the, the biggest piece of metal is going to be the spearheads and then also the figures that have helmets. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to paint all the metallics. And then this is the step at which I would go back and I would fix the shields that I just got metallics on, cover them back up with red, uh, go around and double check all of the bone colors on my skeletons and any other things that need to be cleaned up, which there's not a ton of colors going on with these skeletons. The main thing you really want to make sure is that your, your skeleton bone color is clean. You don't want to have you know, metal on your skeleton's face if it you know, kind of leaked over from the shield. Um, I'm also going to paint up the base. I'm going to be using a very dark base tone, like they're kind of in the, um, the Lands of the Dead. But if you wanted, you could go with any base colors that you want. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about our wash choices. Now that I've cleared up all my mistakes and all of our base coats are on, it is time for what is probably the single most important step of these figures if we we're painting them quickly. I wouldn't necessarily do this with characters, but with these figures that we're going to be banging out dozens and dozens of, the wash is going to help us pick out these details like all the little finger bones and the teeth and the ribs and everything, because there's so many little details on these skeletons. The wash is going to help pick them out really quickly. It's also going to dirty up the nice red shields and the nice, uh, you know, steel uh, spearheads. And we want to dirty those up because these are the legions of the undead. They don't keep good care of their equipment. Now, you've, your three standard washes... Dark tone, that's going to be too dark. That's going to blacken these guys down. I don't really want to mix dark tone with the bone color. So that's out. Then we have strong tone. Now, strong tone could work, but it's very strong, good, no pun intended, um, and it's very brown. And I don't necessarily want these figures to be all browned down, especially with the uh, steel colors. I want these to look not like they have warm colors going with them, but like they come from a land of darkness and gloom. That's also why soft tone's not going to work. Soft tone's a lighter brown, more of a sepia. Uh, definitely not a dark, gloomy, undead color. Um, I also use these on my orcs, and so it makes my orcs very warm. I want these figures to be kind of cold. But dark tone is too dark. So what am I going to do if I can't use my dark, cold tone because it's too dark and too cold? Well, the answer is something called Allie's Brown Liquid. It is the closest thing there is to a universal wash that I can find. It is a mix of four, well, technically three different washes plus a wash mixing medium. Now, I will post a link to Allie's Brown Liquid in the description below. Allie, or Ally, I'm not sure, has an article about it. Um, and he uses the GW equivalents of what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use Strong Tone, or Agrax, or Shade. He uses uh, four parts Strong Tone and then four part soft tone or seraphin sepia, I believe is the GW equivalent. Um, and so this is gonna dull down that strong tone a little bit. So it's gonna be kind of a brown sepia wash. We're then gonna mix in two parts quick shade wash mixing medium or lamine medium. So now we're four, four, and two. So this is gonna bring it down a little bit. Now, so far we just have a brown sepia wash. What makes this magic? The magic is in order to cool this down, we introduce blue just a couple drops of blue. It really, I mean, if I was literally doing four, four, two, I would go with like one drop of blue. Uh, it really depends on your personal taste. But once I put that in there, it's going to give me a brown wash, but with a general cool tone. Now you can't see what it looks like when I apply it, but we're just gonna go in and we're gonna apply this all over. Everything's gonna get this. And you can immediately say, first of all, Forest Dragon, your sculpts are fantastic. Look at the, immediately that wash flows into the planks of the shield. It flows into the grain of the wood, the eye sockets of the skeleton. I want to make sure I kind of get in there behind the shield so I don't have lighter colors that are should be in shadow. Now, I don't want that to pull up too much there. So once I get more off of my brush, I'll come back and I'll wick some of that up. Yeah, there we go. That was too much. 
We're going to put this all over. And when it dries, it's going to be a dark wash, but it's not going to be a dark tone or a null oil. That would be too dark for them, especially because they have these bone colors. I don't want to really put black on beige. It's just going to annihilate the beige. They're not going to look like bone anymore. They're just going to look kind of black and white, which is a look. You could do that, but it's not what I'm going for here. Oh, look, you can really see the big crater in that guy's head now. Also notice, because these are so small, you can see on camera, there's some surface tension that is holding a, almost a bubble in between it. <laughs> Try to blow that bubble out. Otherwise, it's going to dry, and you're going to get this like weird film of wash in between the legs. It happens sometimes, and then getting rid of it, it, it looks weird. So just make sure if you see any weird bubbles appearing between areas that you get rid of that. Need a little bit more so I can go back in the hit the back now. Double check my front. Make sure I didn't miss anything. No. Turn them around. Hit them from behind. Get those weapons. Because these figures are sculpted together in that War Master style as well, or similar if you do historicals to the new um, Warlord Games epic. Uh, 13 and a half millimeter scale American Civil War figures where you've got 10 of them on a strip. Um, there's crevices in between all the skeletons and so where their arms meet other guys' shields and you're going to want to make sure that the wash gets in there. This wash is going to do so much work for us. And on the skeletons especially, because the skeletons have all these little nooks and crannies that the wash is going to pick out. Just want to make sure I don't have too much anywhere. Look for any bubbles. Double check if I missed anything. Yeah, behind that shield. See, this is where you got to be careful. Behind that shield, if you can see it on the guy on the right, there's still some fresh, unwashed bone there. And that is going to stick out like a sore thumb when we're done. So you got to check behind the shields. And that's it. So this is to dry now. I actually have a test model that I washed up earlier. So you can see what it looks like. So you can see it's not black, but it's definitely not a warm brown wash. This one is still drying. I did about 30 minutes ago. It's almost done. And then we'll come back when all of these are fully dry and we're just going to hit a few select highlights. We really only need to go in and highlight two basic colors, uh, the red and the bone, and we'll be done. So now that that shade has settled in and dried, gave it about an hour, we have just a couple little things to do to punch these guys up and give them more contrast. We don't need to do that much contrast. Um, the shade does a lot of the work for us, especially here on the back of the figures. You can really see the detail. It's almost unfortunate the back of the figures have more detail than the front because the shields block all of the ribs on most of the figures. So for highlight colors, I'm just gonna do two. I'm just gonna do red, so I can go in and just punch up those shields just a little bit. I'm not gonna highlight this up to scarlet like I did with my orcs, because I don't want it to be that bright. These are still the legions of the undead, but I do want to clean up some of the red shields and kind of highlight, if I draw a line on the wooden planks, kind of highlights the dark shadow in between those planks. Or the little dabs where light is reflecting off of the metal shields that are red. It's not that much. It doesn't take that long. The other highlight we'll do is with the original skeleton bone, although I mix skeleton bone with a little bit of mummy robe. So whatever bone color you're using, on the front of the figures, I would not recommend highlighting their fingers because they're just too tiny. You can see them and the wash really picks them out. But I do want the tops of their skulls to be a little more sun bleached. And you want your figures in general to be brighter the higher you go. And turn them around, hit them from behind. 
leave the sides a little darkened and leave the, the kind of back underside of the skull a little darkened. And it looks like the sun is reflecting off the back of their skull. Or rather the top of their skull. With this, not this one, but with this one kind of here in the middle, we can do a lot with this guy who does not have the shield because he's got this big old crack in his head. So I can hit a little off to the side of the crack and the other side, and then there's other smaller hairline fractures. You don't want to get your skeleton bone in those hairline fractures because you want to keep that shade. And then you can really highlight the fractures. So you can see every, all the details going on. If you want to highlight the back of the figures, and honestly, you don't have to, especially if these are figures that are going to go in the front rank, but if you have two figures or two strips on a base, you could do this to the figures in the back rank. It's another thing you could do with highlighting is you could base them up and then highlight them. So you're only highlighting the parts of the ranks that face outwards. I'm just kind of hitting the arms, the hips, anything that's got a lot of exposure. I'm not going to, you know, it's 10 millimeter. I can't go in there and highlight all the individual rib bones. It's just not really possible. But just a little bit here and there goes a long way. All right, before I base these up, there is one last thing I'm going to do. Someone in my last orc video asked about highlighting black cloth. And so, now I'm not going to highlight the black cloth on these figures because, as you can see, the combination of the translucent necromancer cloak off, uh, off black color and the shade, there's already a natural highlight on that black cloth. But on something big, like the banner on this figure, I am going to want to highlight this cloth because it is such a big focal point. So we'll come back and we'll do that, and then I'll base them up and you'll see how they look at the very end. In order to highlight what is not really a black cloth, it's a dingy dark gray cloth because it was originally done in necromancer cloak, but with one coat and it's a fairly translucent paint over a white base. So it already came out as kind of a, like a washed out dark gray. Then we applied the Alley's Brown liquid to it. So it has a bit of a brown dingy tint to it, which for the Legions of the Undead, that's perfect. If you're also wondering why my figures have these bronzy looking weapons. I experimented with a rush wash on, uh, rust wash on this particular figure. Didn't love the effect, but it was my practice figure. So for the uh, tabard, what you're going to do is you're going to take your necromancer cloak, and then you're going to take the next step down in gray, which for me is uniform gray. And you're going to do necromancer cloak, and then just eyeball a little bit of uniform gray in there until you come up with a shade that is just a little bit, just a little bit lighter than the current banner. From there, you're going to find all those little raised edges and just highlight along them. If it's a part where you can see there's a flow to this banner, this part is a little raised, I'm going to put just a little bit of this. Now, it looks a lot lighter now because paint, when it's wet, it's shiny. And when it's shiny, it's more reflective and it looks lighter. But when it dries down, it's going to go matte. And that's not going to reflect as much light. And thus, it's not going to look nearly as bright once it's done. Here's another part. The middle of this banner protrudes a little bit. So I'm going to want to throw a little bit of this dark gray on it. But the part behind the weapon, the part underneath the little skull bat symbol, I'm going to want to leave that. This is something every banner is going to be a little bit different. Go along the edges here. These were just on the top. And then if you feel like doing the back, it's probably not necessary. Again, you're looking for the areas that are protruding and should be in sh uh, should not be in shadow. So I wouldn't do it up here because this little crevice here should be in shadow. But then these edges here, I'm gonna wanna hit with my gray. You could do another pass. You could take a little more of your lighter medium gray, mix it in, and then go in and do a smaller pass down the middle. These folds are probably the biggest ones that you're gonna to wanna to highlight with that medium gray. You don't wanna to go too gray because then it doesn't look gray anymore. It looks, or it doesn't look black anymore, it looks gray. But the sharper the fold and the more that fold faces up, 
You're going to want to do that. I might even touch because this guy is the champion. I might even just do a little dabs here. This one's pretty obvious. This figure is going to be in the front line, so... Just dabs of the lighter gray on just a couple of the cloths and the edges can go a long way. Anything that's facing towards the sun. And there we go. Now let me base this up and we'll see how it looks. Three strips on a 45-40 base. And we're done. I have based these figures up three strips on a 40 by 40 base. Uh, some of the paint is still just a little bit wet there in the middle. Um, I based them up with sand. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about the PVA and sand mix, but it was a test. And, um, and then I used uh, dark stone to give it kind of that dark um, land of the dead look to it. And then just a little bit of dry brushing with a mix of dark stone and uniform gray, just to give it something. Um, I'm thinking about doing a little bit of flock with some sort of dead grass, but I don't have the appropriate flock, and then also I would flock it after I varnish it as well, so I wouldn't do it at this point. But that is it for the figures. If you're doing this for Warmaster, of course you would use two strips on a 40 by 20 base, which would be exactly half the size. But as I'm not using this for a War Master, I like the look of the three strips on a 40 by 40 base. I also find it easier to move around and also to pick up and hold. It's a little less small and fiddly as than a 40 by 20. Um, I'll post a nice high quality picture of this and I'm done with my skeletons. At this point, I think I'm going to go back and finish the Little Wars TV Army Painting Challenge of the 15 millimeter uh, Vikings that I've been doing. Here's uh, just a sample of what I'll be doing next. These are actually um, Germanic ancients from the March to Hell Rome, but I'm using them as uh, Viking or Norse shield maidens, lacking the shields right now. Those will be glued on later. So I have the shield maidens as well as some other figures from miscellaneous uh, manufacturers. And that's what's coming up next. If you have any questions about uh, painting 10 millimeter fantasy, it's something I'm really getting into. Um, I am on the Forest Dragon Patreon, and I think in the future I'll probably be doing some Bretonians, and then also whatever he has coming in the summer. Um, everyone keep on painting. This is Chris from Painting Glory, and have a good day.